Corey Hart, Education Specialist for Vermont Fish and Wildlife. And this is Episode 3, Season 3 of our Scat and Track program. So if you have been joining us on this program, you already know kind of the format of how this goes. Uh, today we're going to be highlighting mink. And then afterwards you're going to go out with either your teacher or your guardian and you're going to look for sign of the mink. Specifically focusing on finding the correct habitat. Because the key with any of the species that we look for or that we're highlighting, it's important to focus on that habitat. And then we can start looking for the signs and other key features that allow us to know that they're in the area. And we're going to start our search here for signs of mink. And anytime we go out and look uh, for mink or any other creature, it's important to focus on that specific habitat. And you remember from our earlier videos where I talked about the four things that make up a habitat. And those four things are food, water, shelter and the arrangement or space so that's how so when i say arrangement or space that is the distance between that food water and shelter and every species that we have has different requirements for those just as the same that they eat different uh food and things like that so for today since we're focusing on mink we're going to start in an aquatic habitat uh because mink are a member of the weasel family and they're actually larger than both the short-tailed and long-tailed weasel. And they're one of our most aquatic members of the weasel family. Meaning that they spend most of their life right around the uh, marshes as well as lakes, rivers, and streams. So when we go out and we start looking for them, those are the areas that we want to look. Those are their territory and is that, that's where they live. While mink are found in aquatic habitats, it is very common to actually find them in upland habitat as well, and that typically occurs when mink are traveling from one water body to another and maybe crossing through an area of upland habitat. So identifying our mink. So as you mentioned before, mink are a member of the weasel family, and whenever we're looking for them, we're always going to be focusing on an area that has a permanent water source. That is key to finding mink. And right now, next to me, I have a fur of a mink. So mink are considered a fur bearer, and we actually have a regular trapping season on them in Vermont. And this is a mink that was trapped, and this gives us an idea of what they look like. So our mink are about a foot and a half to two feet long, and they're typically light brown uh, to dark brown in coloration. And you'll see that that color runs the full length of its body where it's really just that nice brown. As you get down near the end of the tail, though, it does get a little bit darker. And you'll see a photo of a full, full-sized full mink on the screen right there as well to give you a little bit of an idea of what they actually look like when they're out there in the wild. But they're, if there was one just standing there, it's only about six to eight inches tall if it was, if it was laying out. So they're not a very uh, tall critter, uh, but they are very long in length. And remember, they are a member of the weasel family. So mink are a nocturnal animal uh, that are primarily solitary, with the exception that during mating season, the males uh, will fight other males as they're competing for a mate. Uh, right now, we're standing in a beautiful marsh setting, and uh, mink actually live in burrows. And those burrows are going to be found right on the edges of whether it's a marsh, river, or stream. And one of the key things that we're looking for, we're looking for habitat for the mink, specifically in areas where there might be a burrow, is going to be irregular shorelines. So you don't, it's an area which is wide and open, that's not going to be prime habitat for them. We're looking for an area kind of like this, where it's really irregular, we've got all these clumps of grasses behind us. This is really prime areas where you would find them. And a burrow is essentially just a hollowed out area on the shoreline, and it's going to be filled with leaves and grasses as well. The reproduction process of mink is extremely fascinating. The mating season for mink occurs from late February to early April. After mating, the fertilized egg remains in limbo through a process known as delayed implantation. During this period, all development of the embryo ceases for approximately 7 to 30 days. After that, the fertilized egg is implanted to the uterus wall and development of the embryo begins. And then around April and May, uh, the litter is born, uh, meaning that the female will give birth. And the young of our mink are actually referred to as kits. And they average about seven kits uh, per litter. When born, uh, kits are born with their eyes completely shut. And they're completely dependent on their parents 
until approximately four weeks old. Uh, mink only have one litter per year, and in the fall, uh, they will be sent off to live on their own. So mink are actually a carnivore, and their diet mainly consists of crayfish, muskrats, uh, fish, and a lot of other species as well. Interesting thing though about mink is they actually have webbed feet, and those webbed feet enable them to swim really, really well uh, when they're going after their prey. They also though will hunt on land as well, so they're not just limited to hunting uh, in an aquatic environment. That said, while they have an extremely good sense of smell that enables them with hunting, they actually have terrible eyesight. So oftentimes when they're hunting, uh, during that aquatic environment, uh, they're going to search for their prey first, kind of from above. Once they identify their prey, then they're going to dive down and swim and get their prey. So now we're into the part of the video uh, where we're almost ready for you to go outside with your teacher or your guardian and look for signs of mink. So that means we have to start discussing some of the signs that we might find when we go out on our nature walk. So the first sign, as you may know, is all of our animals out there in the woods leave some sort of scat. And scat, if you don't already know, uh, is just a fancy word for poop. So where am I going to find mink scat? We're going to primarily find it right near the water's edge, and it's typically going to be found on top of a log. And why would it be on top of a log? Well, it's going to be on top of a log uh, primarily because uh, they're a territorial animal, and that's how they're marking their territory. They'll leave their scat uh, right up on top of a log usually. Not always, uh, but it's just one of the ways uh, that they mark their territory in addition to leaving scent. And what's that scat going to look like? Uh, typically, depending on what they've been eating, there's going to be either feathers, so if it ate a bird, uh, there might be bones, you might see bits, if it eat crayfish, you might see a claw in it. Uh, you're going to see a lot of whatever that uh, mink has been eating is going to be visible in the scat itself. So you see now on the screen that there's a couple different photos of, of mink scat up there. And why we put a couple different photos up there is to show you just how different it can look depending on what that mink's been eating. So it's not like some of our critters where, uh, let's see if I was looking for deer, uh, they have that really distinguished uh, scat. Uh, depending on what that mink's been eating, it's going to look a little bit different. Uh, and we just wanted to give you an idea of what that's going to look like. Uh, well, what are some of the other types of sign that I'm going to find of mink when I'm out there in the woods? Uh, well, the other one is going to be tracks. And on a nice day like this, we have a lot of snow on the ground. It's really easy to find their tracks. Uh, but even if there isn't snow, typically right near the water's edge, you're going to find some mud or some sort of uh, wet sand or whatever it may be. Uh, and that's a really good spot to start our search for tracks. Um, and every critter we have in Vermont has some sort of gait, meaning it walks in a certain way. And our mink are what are referred to as bounders. Uh, so when they walk, their front feet are going to go first, and then their rear feet. And that's kind of how, how they go, which means when they land, their feet are going to be side by side. And we can see that in their tracks. The other key thing I'm looking at on the tracks themselves is they have five really distinguished toes uh, that are going to be visible in their, in their tracks. And you'll see a photo of a couple sample tracks uh, right there up on the screen. So far in this series, we have covered the white-footed mouse, the rough grouse, and now mink. And when you get out there with your teacher, keep in mind that you might see signs of the other species that we covered. So instead of just focusing on mink this time when you go out on your nature hike, I want you to make sure to continue to look for a sign of the white-footed mice, the rough grouse, and mink. And that said though, remember the habitats of those species are a lot different. Whereas mink, we're going to be focusing on that aquatic environment. So get out there and have some fun.